an eight-figure brand spending 50k a day reach out for an audit of his ad account. I noticed some great things, but also some rookie mistakes stopping them from scaling. Join me in full ad account audit walkthrough so you can notice which mistakes to avoid and which opportunities to take. So initially I compared their numbers in Q4, Q1, Q2 and almost whole Q3. We can see that after Q4 spend dropped to 9k then to 5k, currently spending 16k a day. So my initial reaction was okay why spend this so low in Q2 if the blended was the best. So basically you had the best period but you were not spending the most. In my eyes this is not maximizing the efficiency. So during Q2 I would definitely spend more. In terms of the video metrics so definitely all metrics improve. Thumb stop ratio from 16 to 27, hold rate from 26 to 30, watch time from 5 to 7 seconds. This is all amazing and currently all are above average so that's a great sign. On the other side currently CPM is higher than what it was in Q4 which is strange so my immediate reaction okay are we pushing different product advertising in different region or are we just like relying on more videos that you often have higher CPM due to the higher CPM despite better click rate CPC is also higher which is then affecting higher CPA which is currently highest but the good thing is that the AOV improved from 86 to 99 so even though CPA is higher ROAS is the best in Facebook ad account conversion rate dropped but always conversion goes down as the AOE goes up. Frequency, I would say it's average for this level of spend. Percentage of view through conversions is also non-existent and blended is looking decent, obviously not as great as in Q2, but due to level of spend, I think this is reasonable. Also, NC ROS is very well aligned with the target ROS. I have it the blended ROS, so that's good. This brand is scaling, acquiring new customers. That's what we want to see. Okay, so when I started comparing last seven days of the end account, MER was 1.7. Facebook 1.7, Facebook in triple whale 1.47. Okay, when I sorted by spend, I noticed that four highest spending campaigns are all below average, both in Facebook and in triple whale. The budget should always be tied to the performance. So basically the highest spending campaign should be the one with the highest trust or the other way around. So first campaign, ABO testing campaign, grouping concept per similarity per test, which is great and testing variation in each of the ad set. That's great. But highest spender is best in Facebook, but terrible in triple whale. And this client told me they are making decision based on triple veil. So I saw like, okay, what's happening here? It turned out to be that like their media bar is making decision based on Facebook while the client thought they are making decision based on triple veil. Targeting big five countries, exclude 90 day purchasers. But my client told me that like their goal is to reach new customers. So then my suggestion would be to exclude 180 day list of purchase plus exclude a list of buyers sync from Klaviyo. Because now I saw the discrepancy between Ross and NC Ross, meaning that client thinks he's acquiring new customers but he's actually not. In all of the ads, headline was always a discount or the offer, which was strange to me because that is type of the ad that usually works best with retargeting audience. Great thing is a good mix of creative diversification, negative hooks, mom, anxiety, iteration. So like in terms of the creative strategy, this was pretty well executed. Some tests are done with uh, interest audience sleep or organic products, but it was strange to me that sometimes they were doing some tests with those audiences, not necessarily with broad. My suggestion is to always stick with one audience because if you're testing the audience and the new ads and like you're testing new ads with a different audience, you don't know whether those ads are not working because of the audience or because of the ads. So you always want to stick with one variation that you're testing. Advantage shopping plus scale. So one huge miss here is that the audience in segments were not defined. So basically I could not see the breakdown per audience segment per new customers, existing customers, engaged customers, and not even buyers were defined. So there was no cap for buyers. That was strange to me because Advantage shopping plus is great because it gives us ability to tell Facebook, hey Facebook, I want to spend 5% of my budget to existing customers. For clients that care only about new customers, this should be set to zero. And this client did not set anything. So basically he gave freedom Facebook to go after whoever he wants. So that was definitely strange as they were using these exclusions in a regular campaign. All ads are using post ID, which is great. Some ads are clearly underperforming, but they are still active. So I would definitely encourage optimization on the ad level. Second one is doing mostly retargeting. I noticed by percentage of new business, Visits, that this ad is like 50% new visit, which means it's pretty much retargeting. So this is just something to be cautious going forward that it's not necessarily something that's scalable. Third campaign, cost caps with last 14 days best ads. Okay, approach with a different bit. So basically they have same ad set with the different bits trying to find that sweet spot, but the highest spender is terrible in triple whale. So again, it needs to be aligned which main KPI we are using, Facebook or triple whale, using all advantage plus audience in all of the ad sets. So I'm avoiding using advantage plus audience in regular 
your campaigns because I found that they're doing more retargeting and prospecting. So that's not my goal and I don't want to use them. And strange, there were no exclusions in this campaign. Sometimes in Advantage Plus audience, it's slightly hidden. So I like to avoid those. But in this case, client did not notice they're not using exclusion, which is definitely a mistake if their goal is to reach new customers. And one small mistake, thumbnails were randomly selected. I did a whole video about thumbnails here. So if you want to learn why thumbnails are important, I definitely encourage you to check that video. Another campaign, top five Advantage Plus last 14 days. So basically this was a new Advantage Shopping Plus for winners. I'm not sure why it was not added into original campaigns. I would encourage this approach with multiple Advantage Shopping Plus with the different ads only if you're like having too many winners and then like whatever new winners you add to existing Advantage Shopping Plus, they're not getting delivered. If not, I have a new Advantage Shopping Plus only for different products, different region, different uh, maybe sale event, but not definitely for a new week or a new month winners. Top five, bottom of the funnel, two ad sets active. So basically the client had 180 days website visitors and then 30 days website visitors, but they were not excluding one another. So basically 180 days was automatically capturing 30 day website visitors, which in my eyes doesn't make sense because both ad sets are going after same audience. So either you use only bigger one or you use bigger one, 180 days, that's including 30 days. So this one is capturing this period and the other is capturing just 30 day period. Target ROS, so this was like a strange setup. There was a same ad set duplicate 20 times with same target ROS. I'm not sure was that a, like a way of scaling, but it definitely did not work because you just had exactly same 20 ad sets that are competing against each other. UK cost cap, so some good performers, but the bid was not adjusted to give it a bit more room to spend. So when you have something that has a good performance, but it's not spending with the full budget, definitely you want to increase the bid to give it a bit more room to spend. And we had this one ad whitelist where excluding 180 day purchasers because let's either exclude something or not exclude because like these different campaigns have different exclusions. So it's not a fair approach to evaluate them in the same way. Testing image with different audiences. So I would definitely not suggest testing creative with the different audiences initially. It's okay to test different audience once you have a winning ad, but it doesn't make sense to test creative with the different audiences. Sometimes there was a one ad per ad set, which is basically a hit or miss approach because you're forcing Facebook to spend money on variation. It's like, hey, Facebook, here's an ad. You have to spend money on it, no matter the performance. And there was another whitelisting campaign. Basically, it's redundant. It's not needed unless you want to separate campaign pair whitelisting, but you can just use one campaign and have different ad sets. So it's kind of recap of mistakes, definitely overlapping, retargeting, duplicated setup without a reason, uh, with sometimes like 20 duplicates of the same ad set, often one ad per ad set, which is a hit or miss approach, budget not aligned to the performance. So basically pretty strange optimization, no buyers exclusion in some campaigns, testing with multiple audiences, no cap for buyers in Advantage Shopping Plus, no audience defined for segments, does not impact performance, that definitely impacts reporting, and no adjusting bids to give it a bit, a bit more spend to good performance, basically not maximizing difference. So you can see like although the client is spending 50K a day, there were clear opportunities to improve the performance and some additional opportunities, definitely fixing all of these mistakes, consolidation and proper optimizations. I'm not a fan of like having one campaign, but like I think all of these 20 plus campaign could be four or five. Focus on new customer ROAS and making decisions in triple veil based on that number and proper testing framework and structure because now it was just like, uh, sometimes it was good, sometimes it was not good. So like, yeah, if you have a clear structure across the whole ad account, that definitely helps with the performance. And I also did this analysis of the client funnel. So basically click through rate was pretty good. Page was not really much uh, loading fast enough. People check around 1.2 pages per session, which is decent. Almost 20% of them add to cart, 60% of them proceed to checkout and the 40% proceed from checkout to purchase. So basically the funnel was dialed in. There were like no huge drops except potential this lower speed side. But besides that, everything else was was pretty good. So the only opportunity to improve this performance was on the media buying side. So I hope you like this audit guys. If you have any additional questions, just let me know in the comment below. If on the other side, you're an e-com brand spending at least 50K a month on Facebook ads, and you want me to audit your ad account like this, just apply for a free audit or book a call with me below. Cheers.